So looking at problem six, this is from lesson four, and we are supposed to algebraically determine the x-intercepts, not giving any decimal answers. So that means that we need to show all of our work. And I know this is a tedious job. When we find an x-intercept, y is always zero. So whether this is f of x, g of x, whatever it's written in function form, or a y, I'm going to replace that portion with zero. So 0 equals log of 1 half, and then x plus 1 minus 3. I want to get this portion by itself, so I'm going to add 3 to the other side, plus 3, plus 3. 3 equals log base 1 half of x plus 1. Now, most students prefer the equal sign and the numerical value to be on the other side, so I'm going to go ahead right away, and I'm going to rewrite that. Let me just shut the door. Hold on. I think that was the dog. Okay, then I'm going to put this right now in exponential form so I could solve it. Solve it. The base is one half. I'm going to go across the equal sign, raise up the other value, so one half raised to the third power, and set it equal to x plus one. So I'm going to distribute this. I have one to the third, and two to the third equals x plus one. One to the third is one, two to the third is eight. And now I'm going to solve for x by subtracting 1 to the opposite side. So I have 1 eighth subtract 1 equals x. Okay, so we do need to show all of our work here. And now you have a choice. You can do what McFarlane calls the McFarlane method. I call it the butterfly method, the same thing. You can choose to find a common denominator like you probably learned um, in elementary school. I'm going to do that really quickly. So I have 1 eighth minus 1 times 8 is 8 over 8. 8 over 8 is the same as 1, right? So 1 subtract 8 is negative 7 over 8. It's reduced. And this is my final answer. So we have an answer of negative 7 eighths. That is for problem number six. Let's look at problem number seven. Again, I'm going to replace, if I come back up here, I'm going to replace the y with the zero. So I have zero equals, and this acts as a negative one. Negative one times log of two thirds, x minus two, subtract two. I want to get this portion by itself. We do PEMDAS backwards in order to do that. So I'm starting with what can I add or subtract to get this by itself to isolate it? Two equals negative one times the quantity log base two-thirds of x minus two. Divide by negative one. I have negative two equals log base two-thirds of x minus two. And now I'm going to put it into exponential form. So the base, and most students like to put this on the other side, including me actually. So the base is two-thirds raised to the negative two. So take the base raised to the opposite equals x minus two. I'm going to take two thirds, there we go, and I'm going to need to distribute it to both. So this is going to be two to the negative two over three to the negative two equals x minus two. This two isn't happy, it goes to the bottom. I'm going to write over here for the purpose of you being able to see. I'm going to take, bring it to the bottom, it's now happy, it's not happy in the bottom, and now it comes up to the top. So I have nine over four equals x minus two. I'm going to add 2 to the other side, 9 fourths plus 2 equals x. And now, what's the fastest way? It's really up to you. Whether McFarland method, you find the, uh, a common denominator, you do butterfly, all up to you. I think I can quickly rewrite this in quickest form, times 4 times 4 as being 8 over 4. I know that's equivalent to this original 2. This is a plus sign. And now I have 9 plus 9 plus 8 is 17 over a common denominator 4, and this is my value. Um, let's do one more. Uh, looking at a preference here, it's really up to you. I want to choose a harder one. Um, let's go with number 9. Let's finish this off with number 9. So I'm looking at 9, and I'm writing down the exact. Remember, we're asked to find the x-intercept here. And when I find the x-intercept, I'm always going to set the y or function run as f of x equal to 0. So 0 equals, and this acts like a negative 1 times a log of 3 halves, negative x minus 1 plus 3. All right, I'm going to subtract 3 to get negative 3 equals negative 1. And I'm going to be lazy for one second. I'm just going to take this and bring it down. And now I'm going to divide by negative 1 to get positive 3 equals log of 3 halves, negative x minus 1. And then I like to put this value, once I have this part by itself, I like to put equals 3, in this case, on the other side. Putting this into exponential form, I have the base, 3 halves, 
raise it to the value on the opposite side, in this case it's 3, equals negative x minus 1. So we need to distribute that cube to both the 3 and the 2. So 3 cubed over 2 cubed equals negative x minus 1. 3 cubed is 27, 2 cubed is 8, because 3 times 3 times 3, and 2 times 2 times 2. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 1 to the other side. So I'm going to go plus 1 equals negative x. Well, how can I write 1 having a base of 8? I'm going to write it as 8 over 8. So 8 over 8 is the same as the 1 I just added over. Now, 27 plus 8 is 35 over 8. And the last thing I have to do is divide by this negative 1. And I know dividing by negative 1 simply changes the sign. So x equals negative 35 over 8.